Hello everybody, it's me the Mind Injector. In this video I am going to tell you 8 facts you must know about recession to get you prepared. Rampant inflation, rising interest rates and retreating stock prices have a rising number of folks uttering the alarming R war. Given that our last recession ended only 2 years ago, investors may be forgiven if they feel like it's way too soon for another downturn and after all Historically speaking, it is. The pandemic recession that began in February 2020 ended in April of 2020, and this according to the Business Cycle Dating Committee of the National Bureau of Economic Research, which is the arbiter of these things. Although it was the shortest downturn in US history, the economy is still recovering from the nearly 21 million jobs that were lost during the slump. But it still continues to haunt us in other ways. After all, a recession is the scariest creature in the average investor's closet of anxieties. There's little wonder why. People fear recessions because they can mean lower home prices, lower stock prices and of course unemployment. Recessions are parts of the warp and woof of a dynamic economy, albeit unpleasant ones. And if you're prepared for the next recession, there will be plenty of opportunities when that downturn ends. Thus, the more you know about recessions, the better. Here are 8 must known facts about recessions. First one on the list is why are they called recessions? Because calling them depressions is too scary. No, for real. After the Great Depression, a term once considered milder than panic or crisis is the term depression, which for an economic downturn seemed particularly terrifying. That's why economists began to use the term recession instead. Currently, depression is used to mean an extremely sharp and intractable recession. But there is no formal definition of the term in economics. The pandemic recession included levels of unemployment not seen since before World War II. And the 2007-2009 recession certainly had uncomfortable similarities to the Great Depression. In that, it involved a financial crisis extremely high unemployment and falling prices for goods and services. That's why economists now call it the Great Recession. Second one on the list is how long do recessions typically last? The average length of recessions going all the way back to 1857 is less than 18 months. Recessions actually have been shorter and less severe since the days of the Buchanan administration. The long-term average includes the 1873 recession, which was a kidney stone of a downturn that lasted 65 months. It also includes the Great Depression, which lasted 43 months. If we look at the period since World War II, recessions have become less harsh, lasting an average of 11.1 months. In part, that's because bank failures no longer mean that you lose your life savings. Thanks to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and because the Federal Reserve has gotten somewhat better at managing the country's money supply. Also, the longest post-World War II recession was the Great Recession, which began December 2007 and ended in June 2009, a total of 18 months. Conversely, the two-month pandemic recession helped notch the average length of recession down a notch. Number 3 on the list is how often do recessions happen? Again, since 1857, a recession has occurred, on average, about every three and a quarter years. It used to be the government felt that letting recessions burn themselves out was the best solution for everyone concerned. Since World War II, we've gone an average of 58.4 months between recessions, or nearly five years. The last economic expansion, starting at the end of the Great Recession, lasted 128 months. By that measure, we were overdue for an economic retraction when the pandemic recession hit. Number 4 on the list is, what's the worst effect of a recession? An old economist joke is that a recession is when someone else loses their job, and a depression is when you lose your job. Your job is your main source of income. And that's why it's important to have a few months salary in cash as an emergency fund, especially since jobs are increasingly hard to come by in a recession. 
Number 5 on the list is When is the best time to buy stocks in a recession? Historically, the best time to buy stocks is when the NBER announces the start of a recession. It takes the Bureau at least 6 months to determine if a recession has started, but occasionally it takes longer. Often, by the time the Bureau has figured out the start of the recession, it's close to the end. Many times, investors anticipate the beginning of a recovery long before the NBER does, and stocks begin to rise around the time of the actual economic turnaround. For instance, the Great Recession was officially announced on December 1, 2008, which is a full year after it had started. The recession ended in June 2009. The beer market ended three months earlier, on March 6, 2009. Also, the ensuing bull market lasted more than a decade. In the most recent case, the NBER called the end of the pandemic recession on July 19, 2021, or 15 months after it ended. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 gained 50% from April 30, 2020 to July 14, 2021. Number 6 on the list is what's the best thing to do with your money during a recession. Pay off your credit card debt. Here's why. Paying off a credit card that charged 18% interest is the rough equivalent of getting an 80% return on your investment. And you're not going to get that from most other investments during a recession. With that said, bond prices typically rise in value during a recession, provided the recession isn't sparked by rising interest rates. Number 7 on the list is what is the best early warning sign of a recession? More than the stock market, consumer confidence or the index of leading economic indicators, an inverted yield curve has been a solid predictor of economic downturns. An inverted yield curve is when short-term government securities, such as the three-month treasury bill, yield more than 10-year treasury bond. This indicates that bond traders expect weaker growth in the future. The US curve has inverted before each recession in the past 50 years, with just one false signal. This indicator worked for the pandemic recession too. The yield curve inverted multiple times in 2019 and early 2020. On March 3rd, the 3-month T-bill yielded 1.13% and the 10-year T-note yielded 1.1%. To make matters a bit more complicated, some economists prefer using the 2-year T-note yield instead of the 3-month T-bill. The index of leading economic indicators is a composite of 10 indicators, including the stock market and consumer confidence, and is useful for those who want a broader view of the economic picture. Last one on the list is, does the Federal Reserve cause recessions? Officially, the Fed never wants to start a recession, because part of its dual mandate is to keep the economy strong. But unfortunately, the other part of the Fed's dual mandate is to keep inflation low. The main cure for soaring inflation is higher interest rates, which slows the economy. In 1981, the Fed hiked interest rates so high that three-month T-bills yielded more than 15%. Those rates put the brakes on the economy and ended inflation, at the price of a short but sharp recession. This is it for this video guys, thanks for watching and please make sure to subscribe, like and leave a comment down below.